Fans are in, I tested them yesterday and ran the car up to temperature, made some adjustments to the set point of the controller here. I'll have to install all these properly, but I wanted to test everything before I bolted everything down. I really have to recommend an inline filter like this in the top tube on the right side of the car. They catch all the rubbish. I've cleaned this yesterday. It was absolutely filled with debris from the cooling system. I ran coolant flush through the car when I was running it yesterday and I got this filth out. Of course, the orange is mostly from the previous coolant, but there's a lot of rust in there. Just bits that shouldn't be there. So flush your system after you have uh, converted it to electric fans and um, I would recommend doing it regularly anyway as a maintenance activity every couple of years. I've been using rainwater to flush out all the chemicals that I've put through the cooling system. It's a cheap and soft alternative to tap water. The temperature switch in the middle of the frame here brings on the first fan at 83 degrees. And the controller here brings on the second fan at the set point set like this. can see now that uh, charging gauge is giving us a very fat uh, voltage charge because of its increased amperage. And if I put on the air conditioning now that will switch on one of the fans. So I'm just going to click that on. I'm not sure if you can hear that the fan has just come on. Voltage has dropped a little bit so the new alternator is coping very well so it's still at yeah, just about 13 with one of the fans going. Have to switch that off and we'll watch that return. That's good news. Just giving it a little test drive, a quick once around the garage. And I can already tell, even though the car is cold and so not the engine's not responding as well as it would when warm, I can tell it's just a little bit more zip in it. A little bit more pep because I've removed so much rotational mass from the front of the engine, namely the viscous coupling fan. The car's it drives differently already, even at these low speeds, I can tell that. That's 83 degrees there is. Bang on halfway along the gauge at 90 degrees, that's that's where I'd want it to be. Look at all this detritus in there. That's all flakes of rust and god knows what else. Another tip I really highly recommend to help drain your cooling system when the time comes is down there where I'm pointing, there's a little spigot that turns uh, a the bottom of the radiator, I had that put in by the guy who restored the radiator, so all I have to do is turn that spigot and it opens up the radiator and you can drain out through there. Look at that, so much easier having that spigot installed. Typically for the cooling system you have to take off the bottom hose which you need about 16 more elbows to get to. This is the colour of the water that's come out of the engine on the third flush of the cooling system. So originally I used rainwater because it's soft and alkali radiator flush. Uh, I didn't film the results of that, much darker color than this. Then the second flush of just pure rainwater. This is the third one. I think this color is mostly orange from the coolant that I had in originally. You know, it's a good sign. If this is partly rust that's been dissolved, then I'm very glad it's out. That's the filter now emptied. I'll, uh, I'll show you what the bits are like. See here, look at all that crud. That's from another flush. I've emptied this already once, and I don't know what most of the stuff is. Not meant to be there, that's what it is. So numbers are looking good. I think this is a success. It's a cool day today. The temperature is, as you can see down there, below 90. Uh, the fans haven't come on got a good charge and the most important thing here is this number which is imperial miles per gallon 23.6 and climbing 
I'm going fairly slowly, 80 kilometers an hour, that's 50 miles an hour, and going back down to 60, but we've got improved fuel economy because of this fan upgrade.